Warriors, good morning, Warriors. Remember, I need your help today and be quiet when we're talking, okay? So especially when we hear Jack call in a minute. So before we begin, I would like to welcome a few very special members of the Warrior community today. We have Superintendent Cindy Stevenson, on her way. Uh, school board member Jeannie Velvo. <laughs> Mayor Christine Berg. Be the first slide. 
And now, I'm ready for your question, my guy. If you go to the second slide, you'll probably see me wrapped up in a bunch of forts. You guys see that? The coolest thing was probably the spacewalks. Uh, 
you, I, I come from a construction family, so it's in the blood, and I love just going out and building things. But wow, the view uh, while I was out there on the, I think the first one, thank you, like Jack, look down. And I looked down, we're flying over the Bahamas, and they're just so bright blue. Just amazing the, to have that panoramic view of the Earth with nothing between me and it but a, a little helmet uh, was pretty darn amazing. And then to look in the other direction and see more stars that I can even imagine uh, just blew me away. So I'm going to put that number one on one of the coolest things I've done in space. Oh, what's up, Jack? My name is Parkson Jean, and my question is what effects has microgravity had on your body? And what was the most impactful? Alrighty, so you might be looking at a picture of me hooked up to a crazy looking contraption. That's actually our bicycle. And then uh, the, uh, a system that, that monitors our breathing and, and how uh, our, our fitness levels. Um, we actually have to work out a lot. Uh, we uh, learned early on in space flight that you lose a lot of bone and muscle mass, uh, and we've learned how to combat that with drugs and resistive exercise as well as aerobic exercise. I think the biggest change for me, or most impactful change, has been kind of how my brain has remapped and rewired itself. Uh, it, it has to adapt to this new environment and look at things in a three-dimensional manner because that's how we live. And we actually take these little tests where they show you shapes and then they show you two shapes with one of those shapes is the first one rotated in three dimensions and you're supposed to guess which one. And actually it has seen that our scores go up considerably after being up here because the brain just gets better at rotating and doing that mental math. We actually get just a wee bit smarter. So maybe I need to stay up here for a little bit longer. Hi Jack, my name is Julian Paul, and I was wondering what is it like to be living in small space for a long time? Well, you might be looking at a, a circular picture. It's a fisheye of our crew of six watching movies on a Friday night. And the thing that's interesting is you got three people on the bottom, two on the side, and one on the other side. And is, even though it's small, um, you definitely get used to it being small. But you also forget that you can use all four walls. The ceiling, the floor, both walls, it's all useful space, so you actually can fit a lot more stuff, a lot more people, and have a lot more room than you can on the ground where you're kind of constrained to which way gravity pulls everything. So we actually made, we're just a little bit more efficient, and we're able to get a lot more use out of the same volume. Hey Jack, my name's David, and I was wondering how much free time do you have in space, and what do you do with it? David, I don't have a whole lot. I'm kind of a workaholic, so I, I, I sure like doing science uh, a lot. And and um, Peggy and I, uh, we've been alone, and, and now with a, a comrade and Paolo, our, our two new crewmates, and the Russian crewmates, um, we try to keep busy doing our in job. But when we do have free time, uh, after our planning conferences at night, uh, I have learned that the photos have been a, a really fun pastime, and I didn't know how to take pictures very well before I came here, but when I got here, I really, uh, after seeing the beauty, I just wanted to share the experience with the people, uh, so I just started taking pictures like a crazy person, uh, and took thousands of them until I learned how to use the camera well, and, and now I've, I've hopefully been able to capture some of not only the beauty, but the wonder and, and the fun of being in space and been able to share that with people. Hi, my name is Daniel. Uh, my question is, what is one thing you do on the ISS, whether it be research, an experiment, or just daily activities, that you feel people back home should know more about? Well, that's a great question. We actually have uh, lots of resources in uh, NASA.gov, and there's a, a, a spin-off page 
that NASA puts out that shows you a lot of the impacts that the space station and the space program in general have had. But over over the six month increment or uh, five months or so that I've been up here, we're going to work on some 300 experiments both inside and outside the station uh, that are controlled from the ground as well as uh, things that we interact with. And one of them that I am particularly particularly interested in is shown in this picture with uh, Peggy Whitson uh, working on a, uh, a new drug that actually targets the antibodies in lung cancer cells and is hopefully uh, going to be able to be more effective uh, in creating different types of chemotherapy that have less impact on the body and more impact on the cancer. And as a uh, father of Beautifully brave little cancer nature myself. I I uh, am very very tied to the success of this one and uh, more to like it. But actually, as the, the fighter pilot in me, it named it the cancer seeking missile, and uh, I sure hope that it's successful. Good morning, Jack. My name is Pablo Roland, and my question is: What would be the plan of action if a fellow astronaut had a medical emergency? Well, hopefully you're looking at a, a picture of our lab uh, with a, with an AED and a couple of medical packs and then a trauma board uh, that we keep on the center of our laboratory, which is kind of the center of the station. Uh, we actually get a ton of medical training uh, before we fly, uh, so that we're all we all have experience that in operating rooms and in the ER. We spend a couple weeks in the ER. Uh, working, obviously there's doctors watching our every move and making sure we don't screw up, but uh, we just get a ton of training. Uh, that does not mean we're a doctor, but it does mean we can uh, save somebody's life in case of a bad day, and then we would have to evacuate them on the Soyuz. Um, that's certainly not something we want to do. It's very difficult, so we are extremely safety conscious on board to uh, minimize those those mistakes and accidents. Uh, we, in general, try to pick a very healthy population for an astronaut and cosmonaut corps, and then we try to quarantine people before they fly to minimize any germs coming up on board. Hi, Jeff. My name is Laura Hedford, and I'm wondering how it feels to look down on Earth and whether or not your perspective of Earth has changed at all. But well, Nora, hopefully you're, you're looking at my favorite picture from orbit. Uh, this one I remember distinctly because it was the first time where I took a picture where it was as pretty as what I saw with my eyes. And I think that you can't help but be up here and see this incredible world with no borders and all its beauty and just not be blown away and change your perspective on, on life. Um, you know, two days ago, was, I, I mentioned it was the first time I took, got to take a picture of home uh, in Louisville, got Centaurus, got Louisville, got the whole thing. Uh, because most of the time, instead of uh, setting alarms for specific places on the ground, I would just go to the window, uh, open it up, and let God show me what he had, and, and he never let me down. It, it's just an amazing planet. And uh, we have such a small place in it that you can't help but change your perspective. Hi, Jack. My name is Lindsay Welch. I was wondering if a bubble of water escaped an astronaut's attention and it hit the inside of the spacecraft, could it damage the spacecraft if it hit some important electronics? Hey, that's a good question. And if you uh, see a picture, of me staring at a big old bubble of tropical punch. Uh, it's absolutely a problem. And uh, we, we do what we can when designing the systems to make them resistant to such incidents. But we can't protect everything, and so we definitely try to be careful. Uh, we actually had a water leak in the lab uh, the other day, and one of the connectors started leaking a lot of water. And it's are surrounded by electrical equipment. So that can be very dangerous. 
uh, we were able to stop the leak in time and, and keep it away from the, the powered items, but it, it definitely can be a problem. So we've, we've tried to design it out uh, to the best that we can. Other than that, we just have to be ready with our towels and make sure we, we uh, are careful with what we can have water. Hi, Jack. My name is Ian Rivera, and I'm wondering how do you prevent negative effects from solar activity and electric currents on the harbor of the International Space Station? <laughs> Another great question, and, and we actually have red hardening on a few of the items, radiation hardening on a few of the items on the space station, but not many. Um, and unfortunately, we just have to replace things a lot, especially uh, computers and cameras. Uh, the cameras uh, routinely get replaced. Our, uh, our, our photo cameras usually last four to six months until the radiation degradation on the sensor is too significant and our, our video cameras they still work but if you look at it in a little light uh, you'll see all the people damage so unfortunately uh, we just have to replace those more frequently than we'd like to hi jack my name is john painter and i was wondering when you dream do you dream that you are walking or floating Hi, John, and, and hopefully you're seeing a picture of me with my lovely lady and best friend, uh, Elizabeth Simon, and Mal Fisher, who was a 1993 graduate of Centaurus High School. Uh, I pretty much always dream about her, whether I'm on the ground or up here, so it doesn't really change. And I've also always dreamed of flying, and, and that I fly in my dreams, because I guess I'm just kind of weird, but now I'm living my dreams, so... I'm still dreaming that I'm flying. Hi, Jack. I'm Tim McComb, and I was wondering what happens when you get caught slash bleed in space. Well, hopefully you're looking at a kind of strange picture of me with a big old blob of water on my face. Uh, we actually use uh, the back of water for the, you know, like, big blue gooey gel that you use for ultrasounds. We don't need that up here. We can just use water. Because water, blood, any of the fluids are more dominated by capillary action and surface tension. So it sticks to stuff and it will stick to your face. If we if we had a cut on our finger, there'll be a big old blob of blood that uh, builds up on your finger and stays there unless you flick it. And so in some ways, it's, it's kind of nice because it doesn't just go flying all over the place. In some ways, it's kind of gross because when you're working out on the treadmill or something and sweating like crazy, you just get this big old sheet of nasty sweat uh, all over your head. It's gross. Hi, Jack. This is Aiden O'Connell. And what's the general feel and atmosphere of the ISS? The smell, lighting, noises, etc. Well, I don't have a very good nose, so I'm not really sure where it smells. Um, but temperature-wise, we're somewhere around 75 degrees and 20% humidity. Uh, overall, it it it's very well lit. They actually have these new lights on the station that give us different modes. Uh, we have kind of a normal mode, a, an eating mode, or it's a little lower, and then one I call it bright. It's really bright, and Peggy seems to like it in the morning, which in the morning I just like coffee. Um, as far as the smell, though, I do have to tell you kind of a funny story. I'm sitting in the airlock doing this video, and whenever you go outside or when a space vehicle docks and you open the hatch, there's what we call the smell of space. And to me, it smells like when you put on suntan lotion and got burned to a grid. Uh, Amrat seems to think the cream of mushroom soup is what it smells like. But I don't know. It's, it's a strange smell. Hi, Jack. My name is Karen Hollis. I wanted to know what made you want to become an astronaut and how is going to space change your life? Yeah. 
you might be uh, looking at a picture of a little six-year-old me rocking a, a powder blue jumpsuit next to my siblings down at Johnson Space Center. My uh, grandpa worked down there, and uh, we went down and visited when I was six, and I just fell in love with the whole thing. Uh, I love rockets, I love the planes, uh, and I wanted to make a difference. I thought that would be a cool way to do it because I love what I did, so I always wanted to serve my country, and uh, Air Force Academy was a no-brainer, and then uh, uh, trying to follow in that up with uh, going to space was, was just being like a whole lot of fun. And the more I learned, the more it became my passion, uh, the more I felt like I really could make a difference that way. And uh, now, after going to space, uh, my passion has become, I want to share this and make sure that more people can experience it. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can build the infrastructure so your generation and those that follow uh, space is a reality, uh, living here and working here and, and pushing further into the universe. Hey, I'm Nadeef, and I wanted to know what are your thoughts on the planned ISS decommission? And that was the ISS decommission? That is correct. Well, I hope, no, I hope you continue, and I hope that the space station continues because it's such a great platform, and we've gotten uh, the team so uh, good at getting science done that, that I'd love for it to continue, even if it's a, a, you know unmanned or if we have people come and visit and not keep it uh, a routine uh, schedule, or have it the next station, a commercial station, you know, all of that in lower Earth orbit, I think, is important for us to continue because we found a way to do science and get some very useful things out of low Earth orbit. Uh, the other part that the NASA is focusing on now is, is pushing further. So as we explore deeper uh, with the moon, uh, there's talk of a uh, station at a Lagrange point, which is kind of like this little gravity well uh, where we don't have to spend so much gas to keep a, a station in one place. Um, and we can learn and build that infrastructure we need to, to go to Mars and beyond. So there's two real parts. Uh, I hope that we continue in low Earth orbit with the station, and I definitely hope that we will be ready and be Hi, Jack. This is Brian Thomas, and I was wondering if you could do a Space Ninja trick or a Superman for us. And I think you have a video response that we're going to show right now. Yes, sir. It's a video. Brian, I'm not keeping on doing space ninja tricks. The space ninja can do space ninja tricks. But I can't superman. Are you ready? Here we go. Launch! Experiment and the Centaurus Warrior community. We wish you safe travels as you return to Earth in just a few days. <laughs>